Uh, this is my book, Beyond My Wildest Dream. On the cover of my book is my full correct name, John Paul Jack Harris, Jr. This is my outdoor biography, hunting, fishing, scuba diving around the world. Uh, there are also, there's a lot of hunting tips in it, and there are a lot of golf tips, there are some basic golf tips in the book. And uh, one of the chapters is my love of Penn State football. Uh, another chapter is Alaska, the Great Land. Uh, I've spent six years of my life in Alaska, uh, par partially as a fishing guide, partially as a night watchman for the Katmai Lodge on the Alaska Peninsula. And uh, on page 53 of this book, I wrote the song called America and Peace that is a message that I am trying to take to the world. I published this book in 2007. Since that time, I have received some amazing uh, re rewards for publishing the book and the song. One of the awards that I have been given and I'm very proud of is the Ambassador for Peace Award. I love animals of all kinds. Uh, I was a very, very diehard hunter and fisherman for many, many years. Uh, I still love to fish. I still take my rifle for a walk a lot. Don't shoot much anymore. Uh, but I, the, the primary reason the book was written is because I spent 20 years working with the Black Bear Research Team here in Pennsylvania with Dr. Gary Alt. The book, the song, America and Peace, when I received the Ambassador for Peace Award for that song, uh, it gave me a fantasy. And the fantasy was that I could affect the entire future of the world. And instead of being an old man with a piece of paper that says Ambassador for Peace, I am actually trying to uh, promote a worldwide demonstration of for peace on the 1st of, 1st of January of 2018. I tried this once before in two, on the first day of January in 2013. At that time I contacted almost all of the major news organizations of the world. I wrote letters to these different organizations including Al Jazeera, NBC, uh, CBS, uh, none at that, at, in 2013, none of the news organizations made any attempt to contact me back for that request. Now this is a personal, uh, so I'm going to I'm going to try this again now on YouTube, and I'm going to ask for a worldwide demonstration for peace, simply by wherever you are on the first of January. Just hold hands in every country. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to have at least small demonstration in every country in the world. I believe that the, the most effective way to do this would be in the capitals of the countries or possibly at the cemeteries where soldiers have been buried. Uh, when, a soul, when, a, when a human being wants to be the best American, the best Russian, the best Chinese, the best German, he becomes part of his country's military. I totally support that scenario, uh, a young man standing up to be proud for his country. But I honestly believe, uh, I'm going to recite the song America in Peace. This is a message I am hoping to take to the entire world. God has blessed America, and I believe he always will, as long as we stand with justice on top of every hill. Our soldiers are the best of us. They stand at freedom's right. Honor is their cornerstone. The law is their guiding light. The insanity of war is nearly at its end. I believe the world will find a way for all men to be friends. God has blessed America, and I believe he always will, as long as we stand with justice on top of every hill. We ask for understanding, not a military fight. We ask all men to do what all men know is right. Our world is but a cinder, orbiting in space. 
all men should understand this is our only place. God has blessed America, and I believe he always will, as long as we stand with justice on top of every hill. A mother's tears are all the same when their soldiers fall. If they would cry together, the world would heed their call. When all men understand this song, I know it shows the way to honor justice, peace on earth, and all men better day. God bless the world with peace and America my home. God, please bless the world with peace and America my home. I'd like to go back through that for a minute. Uh, the insanity of war is nearly out of ten. I believe that because I do not believe that responsible political leaders of any country believe that nuclear weapons are an option in, world, in war. Uh, I believe that if more than 10% of the, of the nuclear weapons that are in the arsenals of the world today would explode within a very short period of time, uh, this world would be uninhabited. More than 10%, 20, 50, just multiplies the effect of the radiation that would virtually destroy everything else. So nuclear weapons were designed by the supposedly intelligent species of this planet to do one thing, destroy the supposedly intelligent species of this planet. Uh, that doesn't sound very intelligent to me. Uh, with, with China having enough, enough of nuclear weapons uh, to destroy the world two or three times, America having enough of weapons to destroy the world four times or more, Russia maybe six or seven times. Uh, my point is, there's only one world to destroy. How intelligent does that sound? Uh, not very intelligent to me. Um, so I, what I'm asking for is a worldwide demonstration all over, the, uh, in every capital, in every uh, cemetery where soldiers have been, have been buried. Uh, uh, they sh just hold hands for peace at these different locations. There are far, far more good people in this world that just want to live their lives and enjoy their lives than there are bad people in this world. I honestly believe if we could get this started in 18, I believe it would multiply every year and we could have, we could have peace in this world very, very shortly. If the mothers of all the people who have lost their children to war, mothers and fathers, would stand up and say, no more war, I believe we could have peace in this world very quickly. Long lasting peace. Uh, I am, it, it is my goal, it has been my goal, to leave the world a better place because I live. I'm also very anti-litter. Um, I hate seeing litter on the ground. Almost every outdoorsman does. And if people would pick up one piece of litter a day, every day, or more, we could have a, a virtually litter-free world in just a few years. Uh, I, I'm asking people to adopt just the block where they live on, their front, their front yards, their, uh, asking, to, asking to pick up the litter maybe in the block that you live on. And if enough of people would do this around the world, I honestly believe we could have a litter-free and a peaceful world. I'm also a very wildlife conservation, conservationist. Uh, I have founded the Team Earth concept of uh, wildlife preservation, and that includes plants, all, kind, all wildlife on the planet. Uh, I want to, uh, especially our endangered species, uh, on the Team Earth flyer that you would see on my website, and Mark will edit that in later, 
uh, you would see uh, a tiger representing the most beautiful and most endangered of our large predatory animals. <coughs> you would see a brown bear. The brown bear represents the strength of a Team Earth effort to save wildlife. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that young people will watch this video and make an effort to reach for their dream and help it's their world to, uh, it's young people's world uh, to take care of. And they should make an effort, start, start don't wait, uh, start today. Make an effort. With the internet, even the youngest, youngest people uh, can make an attempt to make the world a better place because they live. I'm hoping to be an example to the young people in this planet. Uh, together we, we can make a difference uh, just simply by holding hands on the first day of January 2018 and uh, standing up for wildlife conservation around the world. Oh, I'm also a very, very proud National Rifle Association member. I am hoping to actually be nominated to the board of the National Rifle Association in the not too distant future. Uh, I've been told that the earliest that could possibly happen is 219. Uh, the well-armed civilian population of America is and always has been America's greatest strength. That must continue. With all these shootings that are happening now, uh, far more young people and far more uh, honest, good people should apply for permits to own and carry firearms. The more good people we have owning and carrying firearms, the safer the world becomes. I can prove that with the simple statement everywhere that America, everywhere in America, where the gun laws are the strictest, the crime rate is the highest. That's because the bad guys all know that the good guys can't shoot back. No bad person will ever walk into a police station and say, here's my weapon. It will never happen. It has never happened. A good, a good guy might give up his gun. But most of, most of the guys, most of the bad people, Men and women that own and own, own guns have stolen them, uh, and very, very few of them actually know how to use them very well. I very much encourage, if you own a gun, learn how to use it well and confidently. Uh, I, I recommend learning at very close range, 10 feet from the target. Uh, if, uh, when, you, when you're only 10 feet away from the target and your bullets are following one on top of the other, very, very close, you have learned to shoot well. How far away from the, from the barrel that bullet goes after that 10 feet, uh, it's, it's the quickest way to teach young people. Uh, and and for, I, I like young people to know, too, that Guns never killed a human being. No gun has ever killed a human being. Only people do that. Uh, what, type is, of, what type of gun do you recommend that uh, people starting out should purchase? Oh, a 22 caliber. A 22 caliber rifle is an, or a 17 caliber rifle or a pistol are ideal weapons to learn to shoot very well. There's almost no recoil. And uh, both calibers at, at close range are very accurate. Uh, it only take it only takes me two or three days to teach a woman, teach a man or a woman, to shoot well. My star pupil on that uh, is now Pennsylvania State Police Woman Jessica Wickheiser, who is a state police woman in Philadelphia, and after her first year. When she was in college, 
I called her on the phone and asked her if she'd let me teach her to shoot. She did that. We went to the range several times. She had never handled a gun, be a pistol before, a uh, revolver before, and I taught her right on the target, and I taught her with, to keep this in mind. This is the shot you have to make, Jess. I said, Jesse, this is the one shot you have to make. I said, Jesse, you missed the shot you had to make. Now, you, the consequences are that your partner is dead and your two backup guys are dead. Jess, you never let that happen to you. That's how I taught her to shoot. A year, she, grad, she graduated from Keystone College, number one shooter in her class, which I felt very good about. A year after her first year in the Pennsylvania State Police, I get a text from her. They had, the State Police had to qualify their shooting after their first year in shooting, in the uh, police. Uh, she, she, uh, one, I don't know how many people were involved, but she is the number one shooter with the handgun, number one shooter with a 12 gauge, and number one shooter with an AR, automatic rifle. That is the primary weapon, those are all primary weapons of the Pennsylvania State Police. Uh, I also recommend learning to shoot well, dry firing, with no bullet in the gun, just work the action, and uh, uh, practice shoot, just holding your sight on the target and squeezing the trigger. After you have your trigger control and your sight picture correct, you know how to shoot well. Then it's only a matter of practice to get better. But that learning real close to the target is the quickest way. And the more good people that have guns everywhere, the safer America and the world would be, all over the world. I recommend it for every country in the world. Legally, what in Pennsylvania, what do you have to do to uh, purchase a gun? You can't just walk in and... Well, to purchase a gun, you have to get a... Uh, now, you all, always have to have a background check. The person that sells the gun has to do a background check, which I totally support. The NRA totally support. Uh, it, it may not eliminate all problems, but it certainly would keep the vast majority of bad people from owning guns and ca owning and having guns. But it will not never eliminate the bad guys with the guns. That's why these shootings occur. Here, here, just a week or so, a week ago, uh, in a church, a man opens fire. The bad guy with the gun opens fire on the congregation. If the, if the congregation had been armed, that the third shot, Wayne Lapierre's good guy with a gun, would have been the third shot, and the other, all the other people would have been unhurt, un. Uh, Un, uh, wouldn't be wouldn't be dead from that one single incident. This is the the vast majority of good people. The more people that have guns, the better off America. The better off the world would be. I'm offering these these <coughs> suggestions as just food for thought. I hope that people will look at it and try to understand. I again ask the mothers and the fathers who have lost their children to war to stand up, hold hands, show that they're against war across the board, and I believe uh, these demonstrations would grow to a point where no government leader could ignore the demonstrations for world peace. All right, there's a group of people uh, mostly in the Philadelphia area that I would like to thank for having helped me spread my words and uh, have, hope, have contributed to my life greatly. One is Mr. Sam Lackey. Uh, Sam Lackey was my sponsor, uh, primary sponsor in the uh, Ambassadors for Peace Award. Uh, 
I was at a Sunday for, with Sam at the Unitarian Church in Philadelphia, and I met Shirley Carter. Shirley Carter uh, eventually, uh, I have been on her television show, singing the song America and Peace. Uh, so she, and she led me to Rhonda Gibson television show, Like It Is. Uh, Rhonda came up with the idea of stopping the gun violence in Philadelphia uh, block by block. That is exactly what's needed in Philadelphia, it's needed in Chicago, it's needed all these in New York City. If the good people in every, there are far more good people in every block, everywhere in every city, than there are bad people. If they would stand up together and start looking out the windows and trying to, take, trying to film anything that they consider crime in the, in the area. Uh, if they're afraid of the gangs, if you're afraid of the gangs and you don't do anything about it, you pass that fear of your fear of the gangs to your children and your grandchildren and nothing changes. If you're afraid of the gangs, I recommend strongly that you go through your media, your uh, clergy, your ministers and rabbis and priests have all taken a stand for God and for peace in this world. Uh, so if you go through your clergy, your clergy is not afraid to stand up and ask for uh, stand up to the gangs and uh, don't let your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren be victims of the same crime that you are so afraid of in your areas now. Stand up for your children. Stand up for your grandchildren. As I said, I, I'm, I'm hoping to make some impact on the future. Uh, 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 Rhonda Gibson's show, Like It Is, Shirley Carter's is, um, Thanks for Sharing. Uh, Rhonda, um, I've seen the Trudy, Trudy Haynes was for a long time a cornerstone in the Philadelphia area media. Uh, I have been on her show and know, know her personally. Francine Natal. Huh? Francine Natal. I have not. I have not personally met Francine Natal, but I was talking to her on the show, on the phone today, and we are arranging a meeting with all the people I have just met sometime in two, or just mentioned, in Philadelphia, uh, and with the whole group meeting. Uh, as I said, I have not met Francine Natal uh, on November 28th of this month, I will be on the Francine Natal radio show, highlighted on the Francine Natal, spotlighted on the Francine Natal radio show out of Philadelphia, the Amazing Scribble show. Uh, and she, it will be the seventh time that I have been on her radio talk show. Uh, when uh, I talk on her show, she'll talk for 10 minutes, I'll talk for 10 minutes, she'll ask me a question and then she'll take phone calls. I have gotten phone calls on her show from almost every uh, state in this country, Canada included, and uh, the Azores and the Bahamas. Uh, uh, so I know that there are huge numbers of people listening to the uh, Francine Natal radio show. Uh, I just was on the phone today again with another lady that does a talk show in the Philadelphia area and uh, I will be on her show in the, in the coming months. Uh, these are people that are very very important to me. They have helped me tremendously and are continuing to do that and I could never thank them enough. Um, I'm, also, I'm also looking for uh, I have a, at least a one-hour presentation that I can put together on conservation issues, stand-up comedy, 
Do you do any wildlife uh, lectures or presentations? Uh, wildlife. Uh, in my book, there's a poem uh, that I'm very proud of, and it accurately, uh, this poem was published in 2007, and it accurately describes the current weather condition ten years later. Mother Earth. Uh, for billions of years she has circled the sun, creating conditions for us to have our fun. The great dinosaurs were in our way. A cosmic accident caused their dismay. With these huge beasts, humans could not have lasted. An asteroid landed and their world blasted. Into extinction they went their way. Now conditions were right for our first day. Mother continued to make things right for humans to evolve from the cosmic night. If she knew what we would do, she would have stopped and thought things through. For we have put her in such a bind, she may now think she lost her mind. Her children she fed for a million years. Now she may drown us with her tears. Earth's average temperature is on the rise. This is a fact, not a surprise. The ice is melting and may disappear. The surface of the sea will swallow cities year after year. The storms will grow in size and power. The rain will increase by the hour. The coral reefs will no longer bloom. The heated water will lead to their doom. Very few species can change this path. Most of the others will breathe their last. Dear Mother, I cannot change the human race. Our intelligence may not keep us from failing in disgrace. How does the human race fail? The use of nuclear weapons in war will destroy the human, the total population, wildlife, and human population of this world. Not a not a reasonable option of any kind. Uh, I point out now that we may have the most dangerous man in the world in charge of North Korea. Uh, uh, he, he just doesn't get the fact that uh, a country the size of North Korea does not require nuclear weapons, especially if we have a long-term peaceful world. Uh, you have another book coming out, don't you? I was supposed to have, I have I'm going to produce a fourth edition of my original book, I wanted to do uh, a book called The Amazing American Ball Eagle. Uh, I just can't afford it at this time uh, to produce it. Uh, there, there is some evidence that my life may change financially in the very near future. If that happens, that book will become a reality. It was uh, the, the book The Amazing American Ball Eagle uh, was all filmed and photographed in Alaska and it would be just uh, numerous photographs of eagles doing what they do naturally. Uh, another, th another thing uh, in this uh, Team Earth Conservation that I I'm, I'm going to go back to uh, um, on the t-shirt that I had made, Team Earth Conservation, there is also a blue whale, which is the largest creature ever known to inhabit the world. Uh, he is still out there, uh, far larger than any of the dinosaurs, uh, and he's still living in the ocean, but he is a very rare animal. Uh, he represents the need for clean water across this planet. Every stream, creek, and river flows into nature's heart uh, the Earth's heart, the oceans of the world. That's where life originated on this planet, and uh, the need for clean water is an absolute to the future of the world right now. <laughs> where can you where can you get your cur your current book now? Oh well, I I prefer actually to sell them. I often sell them in sporting goods stores. Uh, they. It is listed on Amazon, I have been told, but I have never furnished books for Amazon. Where they get them, I don't know. Uh, I know that early in my 
uh, book selling career, I did a lot of consignment books. And in most cases that proved out to be fine, but a lot of those books disappeared. And uh, I don't know, I once got a lot, I once saw my books advertised. And I contacted the post office. Uh, I was told that they bought them from the post office. I had shipped a case of books to Ohio, and apparently the case got broken open, and the books were confiscated, and the man, the man that was advertising them on, uh, on uh, Amazon for a few dollars a piece just bought them from the uh, postal service uh, for almost nothing. Uh, my name and my address is on the second page of this book, but the United States Postal Service made no attempt to contact me. They sold them for a profit. Uh, another one pet peeve of mine uh, that I'm not very happy about. Uh, I don't see why I wasn't contacted. My name, my name is on the front cover. My address was on the second page and it was just confiscated and stolen and sold to people for a few, for 10% of what the, uh, it cost me to produce them. Never got any compensation at all from that. Uh, that's history. I don't expect anything from it now. Maybe we can help uh, keep it happening from other people in the future.